This book is called Hell's Reach by Aaron Dembski Bowden. Prologue. I will die on this world. I cannot tell where this conviction comes from. Whatever birthed it is a mystery to me, and yet the thought clings like a virus, blooming behind my eyes and taking deep root within my mind. It almost feels real enough to spread corruption to the rest of my body, like a true sickness. It will happen soon, within the coming nights of blood and fire. I will draw my last breath, and when my brothers return to the stars, my ashes will be scattered over the priceless earth of this accursed world, Armageddon. Even the name twists my blood until burning oil beats through my veins. I feel anger now, hot and heavy, flowing through my heart and filtering into my limbs like boiling poison. And the sensation, and it is a physical sensation, reaches my fingertips. My hands curl into fists. I do not make them adopt the shape. It simply happens. Fury is as natural to me as breathing. I neither fear nor resent its influence on my actions. I am strong, born only to slay for the Emperor and the Imperium. I am pure, wearing the blackest of black, trained to serve as a spiritual guide as well as a war leader. I am wrath incarnate, living only to kill until finally killed. I am a weapon in the internal crusade to forge humanity's mastership of the stars. Yet strength, purity and wrath will not be enough. I will die on this world. I will die on Armageddon. Soon my brothers will ask me to consecrate the war that will be my death. The thought plagues me, not because I fear death, but because the futile death is anathema to me. But this is no night to think of such things. My lords, masters and brothers have gathered to honour me. I am not sure I deserve this, but as with my sixth sense of foreboding, it is a thought I keep to myself. I wear the black and glare from behind the skull visage of the immortal emperor. It is not for one such as I to show doubt, to show weakness, to show even the whispering edges of blasphemy. In the holiest chamber of our ancient flagship, I lower myself to one knee and bow my head. This is because... This is what is asked of me. Time has come after a century and a half, and I wish it had not. My mentor, the warrior who was my brother, father, teacher and master, is dead. After 160 years of his guidance, I am on the edge of inheriting his mantle. These are my thoughts as I kneel before my commanders. This bleak mesh of my master's death and my own yet to come. This is the blackness that festers unspoken. At last... Unaware of my secret torments, the High Marshal speaks my name. Grimaldus, High Marshal Helbrecht intoned. His voice was guttural rumble, rendered harsh from yelling orders and battle cries in a hundred wars on a hundred worlds. Grimaldus did not raise his head. The knight closed his disquietly gentle eyes as if this gesture could seal the doubts within his skull. Yes, my liege. We have brought you here to honour you. Just, if you, just as you have honoured us for so many years. Grimaldus said nothing, sensing it was not his time to speak. He knew why they were honouring him now, of course, and the knowledge was bitter. Mordred, Grimaldus's mentor, a reclusiarch of the Eternal Crusade, was dead. After the ritual, Grimaldus would take his place. It was an honour that he had waited 160 years to receive. A century and a half of wrath, courage and pain since the Battle of Fire and Blood, when he drew the eye of the revered Mordred was already ancient but unbowed, and who saw within the young Grimaldus a burning core of potential. A century and a half since he was inducted into the lowest ranks of the Chaplain Brotherhood, rising through the tears of his master's shadow, knowing that he was being forged in a war to replace his ageing guardian. Over a century and a half of bleeding, believing he would not deserve the title when it finally rested upon his shoulders. Now the time had come, and his conviction had not changed. We have summoned you, Helbrick said. To be judged. I have answered the summons, Grimaldus said in the silence of the reclusium. I submit myself before your judgment, my liege. Helbrecht wore no armour, but his bulk was barely diminished. Clad in layered robes, bone white and bearing his personal black heraldry, the High Marshal stood in the Temple of Dawn, his hands clutching an ornate helm with all due respect. Mordred is dead, Helbrecht's voice was a deep murmur, slain by the arch enemy. You, Grimaldus, have lost a master. We have all of us lost a brother. The Temple of Dawn, a museum, a reclusium, a sanctuary of hanging banners from 10,000 years of crusading, briefly came alive 
as the knights in the shadows intoned their agreement with the liege lord's words. Silence returned, and Grimaldus kept his gaze on the floor. We mourn his loss, the High Marshal said, but honour his wisdom in this, his final order. It comes to this, Grimaldus tensed. Show no weakness, show no doubt. Grimaldus, warrior priest of the Eternal Crusade, it was the belief of Reclusiarch Mordred that upon his death you would be the worthiest of our brother chaplains to stand in his stead. His final decree before the returning of his gene seed to the chapter was that you, of all your brethren, will be the one to rise to the rank of Reclusiarch. Grimaldus opened his eyes and licked his lips that had suddenly turned dry. Slowly he raised his head, facing the High Marshal, seeing Mordred's helm, a grinning steel skull in the commander commander's sacred hands. Grimaldus, Halbrecht spoke again, no hint of emotion colour in his voice. You are a veteran of your own right, and once stood as the youngest sword brother in the history of the Black Templars. As a chaplain, your life has been without cowardice or shame, your ferocity and faith without equal. It is my belief, not merely the wish of your fallen master, that you should take the honour we offer you now. Grimaldus nodded, but uttered no words. His eyes so deceptively soft in their gaze did not waver from their stare. The helm's slanted eyes were rich, deep red of the arterial brook. The death mask was utterly familiar to him, the face of his master when the knights went to war, making it the face of his master for most of his life. His scullish visage smiled. Rise, if you would refuse this honour, Albrecht finished. Rise and walk from this sacred chamber, if you wish no place in the hierarchy of our most noble chapter. He tells me to rise if I want to turn my back on the great honour of being offered to me. Leave if I wish no place among the commanders of the Eternal Crusade. I do not move. Despite my doubts, my muscle remain locked. The steel mask sneers, a dark leer that is soothing for its brutal familiarity. From beyond the grave, Mordred grins at me. He believes I was worthy of this. That is all that matters. I had never known him to be wrong. I feel the edge of a smile creeping across my own lips. It will not fade, no matter how I try to quell it. As I kneel in this hallowed hall, I know I'm smiling, but it's a private moment despite the dozens of fellow warriors watching from the banner-lined walls. Perhaps they mistake my smile for confidence. I will never ask, because I do not care. Halbrecht approaches at last, with all the silken rasp of steel stroking steel. He draws the holiest blade in the Empyrean of Man. The sword was as ancient as human relics could be, given form and purpose in the forges of terror after the great heresy. In those nights of saga and legend, it was carried into battle by Sigismund, the first emperor's champion, favoured son of Primarch Rogel Dorn. The blade itself, as long as a mortal man is tall, was wrought from the broken remains of Lord Dorn's own temple. In this temple, where the chapter's greatest artefacts are kept in reverently maintained stasis fields to ward off the corrosive touch of time, the High Marshal held the most sacred treasure in the Black Templar armoury. You will have your own rituals within the Chaplain Brotherhood, Holbrook said, his voice solemn with respect. For now I recognise you as the inheritor of your master's mantle. The blade's silver tip lowered, pointing directly at Grimaldus's throat. You have waged war at my side for two hundred years, Grimaldus. Will you stand at my side as reclusiarch of the Eternal Crusade? Yes, my liege. Halbrecht nodded, sheathing the blade. Grimaldus tensed again, turning his head and baring his cheek. The force of a hammer, the back of Halbrecht's fish crashed, crashed into the chaplain's jaw. Grimaldus grunted, tasting the coppery vitality of his own blood, his Primarch's blood, and he grinned up at his commander through blood-pink teeth. Halbrecht spoke again. I dub thee Reclusiarch of the Eternal Crusade. You are now a leader of our blessed chapter. The High Marshal raised his hand, showing the flecks of Grimaldus' blood, marking his curled fingers. As a knight of the inner circle, let that be the last blow you receive unanswered. Grimaldus nodded, unclenching his jaw, calming his heart and fighting the sudden, f sudden flood of his killing urge. Even expecting the ritual strike, his instincts cried at him to respond in kind. It will be so, my liege. As it should be, said Helbrecht. Rise, Grimaldus, reclusiarch of the Eternal Crusade.